Welcome to class 24 in topics in power electronics and distributed generation. In the last class, we talked about uh, transfer of power between two sources and we, found, we looked at an efficient way of transferring power from one source to the other with one side being a voltage source and the other side being a current source. And uh, efficient switch arrangement to transfer power in such a condition can be modeled as a single pole double throw switch. And we saw how it can then be extended to a DC uh, to AC inverter, which is commonly required for a distributed generation or a, a power quality or uh, any uh, inverter application. And we looked at the simple case of it where we are looking at it on a single phase basis, one leg at a time. And, uh, it can also then be generalized to include uh, the actual uh, diodes and transistors uh, to form a real realization of such a power uh, converter circuit using transistors and diodes uh, to implement the, the single pole double throw configuration. Uh, also one can then look at uh, what is the output voltage that can be generated in such a, uh, such a system. And we looked at the average output voltage that can be uh, uh, obtained. So we looked at the average voltage from the output to the neutral uh, midpoint of the DC bus. And this was VDC by 2 T on minus VDC by 2 T off. And this is average over duration of TSW, which is the switching duration. And we know that the T on can be related to the duty cycle as T on is equal to D times TSW. And T off yes. So it gives the time, T on is a time duration of the top switch being on. And we saw that we could actually get a relationship between the duty cycle and the output voltage on an average uh, switching uh, cycle basis. So if your duty cycle is varying between 0 and 1, your output voltage uh, can have a value of minus VDC by 2 at a value of 0 and uh, plus VDC by 2 when duty cycle has a value of 1. So if you look at the grid voltage that uh, <coughs> uh, or the voltage that gets connected to a power converter uh, at the output you would like to get a relationship between what is the actual output voltage uh, at your load or at the terminal of the inverter and the DC bus voltage that uh, is available to you. And that you can get a relationship uh, based on uh, if your grid voltage Vg is some A times A amplitude of voltage AV cos omega naught T. Uh, common voltage that we have in uh, uh, a single phase system in India is uh, two, 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 230 volts. Okay. So AV is 230 square root of 2 would be uh, the amplitude of your voltage that you are being that is being applied. And uh, for the positive half cycle your T on max it can be as much as your uh, uh, <coughs> so in the positive half cycle your T on max can be as much as TSW so you can apply as much a voltage as VDC by 2. In the negative half cycle T off can be as large as TSW so you can as apply as much as minus VDC by 2. <coughs> So, so you can get a relationship between uh, 
what is the output voltage that you are applying and what is your DC bus, your T on max is TSW when duty cycle is equal to 1 and so you get your average VON that is being applied can have a maximum value of VDC by 2 and if we take uh, v on average to be equal to the peak of the voltage that you are applying, you are talking about 230 root 2 is equal to V d c by 2. Uh, so, this is about 230 root 2 is about 325 volts. So, you are talking ideally of, of about 650 volts as your d c bus voltage when you are uh, input voltage is about 230 volts. Uh, we will see that you have to add additional factors over and above this particular uh, DC voltage uh, in an actual application. Uh, so, so, before we do that we will actually look at what it means to, uh, uh, to say you are building a uh, inverter of a given specification. So, a typical power converter that uh, will be built, uh, you first need to know what power rating it is going to handle. So, whether it is uh, 100 watts, uh, kilowatt, 10 kilowatt, megawatt. So, a uh, basic quantity uh, of uh, that, that is specified when you design a power converter is the power rating. So, once you know the power rating, the next uh, important quantity is uh, what is the voltage rating, uh, especially the AC voltage rating which is what gets connected out of the terminals of your power converter and uh, common AC voltages are uh, can be 110 volts, uh, 220, 230 volts, uh, 480 volts, 560, 690. There can be a range of voltages depending on different geographical lo locations etcetera. A common voltage uh, for a single phase system uh, is uh, 230 volts uh, for us. So, it is not just uh, the voltage uh, rating, we also want to know what is the range around the nominal voltage because ideally you get the exact voltage, but we know that there is going to be a range around the nominal voltage. You might have uh, positive value above the range and negative value below the range. You might have 10 plus 5 percent voltage over the nominal, uh, minus 10 percent. So, depending on the range around the nominal, we also have uh, to know to actually design the specification of the power converter. Okay. So, you are talking about uh, in terms of power rating, you are talking about uh, of range of watts could be even as large as megawatts depending on uh, the application. So, voltage rating you are talking about uh, uh, your AC voltage rating. So, you are talking about 110, 230, uh, 480 volts, uh, 690 etcetera. All these voltages are below uh, 1000 volts. Uh, so, what is typically considered uh, low voltage systems. The frequency uh, rating is also an important uh, factor, uh, though it might not directly affect your power semiconductors, it might affect your speed of cooling fans etcetera. Uh, nominal frequency in our case would be 50 hertz. Uh, uh, again the electrical interface required is also an important consideration. Uh, by electrical interface, it is uh, the, the most basic aspect of it is whether it is a, a three phase system, single phase system, whether you have three wires, four wires. Uh, so, the number of uh, AC connections coming into your power converter is an important uh, aspect of uh, the design. So, what we have been considering in our start basic design is a single phase uh, uh, power converter. Uh, other important factors which are important are environmental specifications. So, when we talk about environmental specification, there are a number of factors. One is uh, what is the ambient temperature. So, uh, a higher ambient temperature would be a more challenging design 
for a power converter. Uh, also, whether your power converter is designed for indoor or outdoor application, uh, the environmental uh, the, the degradation experienced by a converter meant for outdoor can be more severe compared to an indoor. So, uh, you will have to pay attention to wh where exactly is the location of your power converter. You also have uh, uh, what people refer to as the ingress protection of your power converter. Uh, so, people talk about uh, IP rating of your converter cabinets. Uh, uh, IP ratings like IP00 means that there is no protection. You can put your hand in and you might potentially get a shock. Uh, there is uh, no uh, uh, waterproofing. Uh, whereas a larger number like uh, IP66 means that uh, it is fully sealed and your dust will not enter the cabinet. Or also, you can have water jet sprays under which uh, uh, some of these cabinets can be immersed and you will not have damage to the electronics. The electronics would function even when uh, the in ingress protection number is, uh, is at the higher side. Again, the cost of equipment goes up with uh, highest, uh, higher IP numbers, ingress protection numbers. So, if you have an uh, enclosure which is very tightly sealed, it means thermally cooling it is more challenging, uh, whereas something which is open frame is easier to cool, but there is more risk that some dirt might fall on it, it might get damaged. So, there is always a risk between uh, how you handle your IP ratings, typically when we develop something in an academic lab, we might develop things in an open frame basis, but finally when you have to send it to a customer, uh, aspects such as IP protection is important. Also there are uh, other important uh, fa factors such as vibration uh, or whether your uh, equipment will survive an earthquake depending on what level of uh, impact or shock is being experienced in the cabinets, whether there are capacitors in the cabinet which might fall up from your uh, uh, mounting. These are important aspects of uh, specifying a power converter. Uh, we will start with uh, the basic uh, uh, a single phase power converter and if we take a single phase power converter and assume that it is go going to be operating. Uh, <coughs> Uh, is going to be operating as a, as a, a distributed generation unit, we will assume that it is going to be at unity power factor. Okay. We will assume that there is unity power factor operation, sinusoidal uh, AC voltages and currents. So, your power is VRMS, IRMS and so your I rated is P rated divided by your V and one thing that we just mentioned is the V depends on what range around the nominal you want to actually operate. So, for example, if you have a range around the nominal as plus 5 percent, minus 10 percent, it means that for a given power rated, uh, if your voltage is 10 percent lower, it means that your current has to be rated higher, uh, which means that your component costs are going to be higher. If you have a, a, a system which is now going to be used in an application where the power quality is going to be poorer, it means that your voltage range may be wider. It has an impact on the cost because it means that you have to have higher current ratings. So, uh, you need to make sure that there is a trade off between how much power quality uh, uh, situation you are willing to encounter and to what specification you want to maintain your power requirement. So, a larger voltage range 
would imply that uh, greater current rating for the components given P rated. So, we will again look at uh, what is the voltage that uh, uh, we would uh, we need to have on your DC bus uh, given a, a, a given a AC voltage and these voltages are related <coughs> to your nominal AC voltage variation. So, if you think about the, uh, the, the grid voltage as uh, as a phasor V grid, you can have a, a number of factors. One thing that we mentioned is that the grid voltage might have some tolerance, uh, which might increase the value of the actual Vg. The other factors that can actually affect us uh, you between the power converter and the uh, your output voltage and your inverter, you have a filter inductor. So, you might end up with a drop on the filter inductor. So, you need to also incorporate how much drop you might expect on that particular filter inductor drop. So, depending on the power factor, if your um, I out is going to uh, be lagging for some reason, if you want to actually provide capacity wars, you might end up with further uh, increase in value in your. Uh, terminal voltage that is required by your power converter. Uh, if you take a typical filter, uh, starting assumption might be your filter inductance might be 10 percent. So, you are talking about here a AC voltage variation of uh, say 5 percent uh, addition over here, you might be talking about a 10 percent addition over here. You also have factors such as dead band, which is will explain what the dead band is. Uh, typically, when you have uh, a leg of a power converter, uh, we saw that to uh, uh, the one of the condition is that we cannot short both the tops and the bottom together or you will cause a shoot through across the voltage source. The other is that your current uh, always has a path. So, to prevent the positive and negative being uh, shorted, you always have a duration where both S plus and S minus is simultaneously kept off for a short duration called the dead time. Now, if you look at uh, the effect of this particular dead time, uh, the effect of the dead time depends on the polarity of the current. So, if you look at an ideal sine triangle modulation, whenever your duty cycle is greater than your triangle V T R I, your S plus is on and S minus is on whenever S plus goes low. But in, a, in the actual signal that is provided to the gate of the devices, your S plus and S minus, uh, your st starting edge of your signal is always delayed a little bit, so as to prevent uh, both top and bottom switches from shooting through. And this delay duration is, uh, is uh, uh, called the dead time. Now, if your current polarity is positive, uh, turning off S1 will automatically cause the complementary diode to turn on. So, there is no error being caused during the positive polarity current um, uh, when, your, uh, when your current is in the positive polarity. But when you are trying to actually t t turn, turn on the top switch, uh, any delay in the turn on of the top switch will increase the amount of time for which the bottom diode is still conducting, which leads to an error in voltage. And this error in voltage depends on uh, the ratio of your, the, the, the average value of this particular error in voltage depends on your DC bus voltage. Uh, in this particular case, the error is negative. It depends on your dead time. It depends on your switching duration uh, TSW uh, 
and uh, you can think of it as a voltage which is like a square wave and if you want to convert it back to a sine wave of uh, some particular fundamental it will you can add a factor of 4 by pi to get the fundamental effect of the dead time and this gives you a, a, an additional factor which you need to have in your AC voltage output to ge generate your, uh, your required uh, PWM output. So, we will assume that this is also having a factor of plus 0.5 percent. So, overall if you then look at the relationship between your DC bus voltage and your, uh, your AC output, you will end up with now your 230 times root 2 plus a factor for your uh, dead time plus a factor for your uh, delta uh, Vg, your Vg variation and you might have uh, a, a factor for filter drops. Uh, some of these factors might be not exactly in phase for example, the filter drop might be 90 degrees lagging whereas, your dead time might be in phase, but we also need to consider that you have a margin between what is the actual dynamic voltage available by, to control your output and the actual voltage that is there at the terminals of the inverter. So, overall keeping in mind factors such as this we will see that the actual DC bus voltage required is not just 325 it might has it would have uh, or 650 volts it has to be greater than 650 volts a common voltage you might end up requiring maybe uh, uh, you multiply these factors you might be getting a voltage close to 800 volt. So, you can see that uh, uh, these factors do add up and you have to actually get uh, adequate margin between your actual DC bus voltage and uh, your operating voltage. Uh, for your AC side of your system. Also keep in mind that we are assuming basic uh, single phase sine triangle modulation for your pulse width modulation of the switches. Uh, this voltage now has an implication on your uh, selection of components within your power converter. Uh, two parts uh, are there to, to it, one is we know that in the actual power converter your, your DC bus is uh, which is over here shown as two uh, uh, voltage sources of VDC by 2 is actually built with uh, capacitors. So, the first uh, uh, implication is on the rating of the capacitors that are used in your DC bus. So, if you have to have a, a DC bus voltage of 800 volts it means that your electrolytic capacitors uh, have to be maybe uh, 850, 900 volts etcetera and because it is not very common to have uh, high voltage capacitors uh, of gre uh, greater than 500 volt, you might have to end up now having series connected capacitors in a, a power electronic application where you are having to have uh, say 230 volts AC. Uh, so, in this particular case maybe uh, because your DC bus voltage is 800 volts you might use two capacitors each capacitor having 450 volts. Uh, another important implication of this particular uh, relationship of AC voltage with the DC voltage is the rating of the, the switches and the diodes. So, the switches that you would typically use it might be some transistor uh, uh, to some extent maybe you could even find a FET which can operate at that voltage commonly people might use uh, IGBTs in, which are insulated gate bipolar transistors and again the voltage ratings of these uh, components these transistors are not uh, uh, continuously varying you might have uh, uh, say fed set 100 volts 200 volts 400 volts 600 volts then uh, it may jump to 1200 volts there may be a few components which are available at 1000 volts so quite often you might end up selecting uh, the voltage rating of your uh, switches to be 1200 volts uh, commonly when you deal with a 230 volt uh, system uh, because it now directly links your AC side voltage to what is required on your DC. And we will see that uh, you also need adequate margin in your transistors because there is large DIDTs during switching of the transistors 
and you need adequate margin between your, your actual voltage rating of your DC bus and your voltage rating of your transistor devices. So now that we uh, have a feel for what would be uh, the preliminary voltage rating required by some of the components, we can then take a look at uh, what could be some of the currents that are flowing through uh, this particular circuit, uh, especially on the uh, DC bus. And uh, uh, we are, we'll look at the capacitor currents uh, closely. And there are actually in a circuit such as this, uh, different frequency components of currents that can actually flow through uh, the circuit. Uh, the first uh, component that we'll look at is the fundamental component of the capacitor current. Uh, because this is a, a, a single phase system, your I out is actually a, a 50 hertz uh, AC quantity. And we, deter we saw how I out is related to your P rating and your AC voltage uh, rating. So your I out in this particular case ha can flow through your, uh, your source, which is your AC grid, but then it has to flow back through your neutral and come back into your DC bus. And uh, if you take your current I out to be AI cos omega naught T, your, your I RMS is AI by root 2, taking the uh, uh, output current to be a sinusoidal quantity, okay, which is well filtered. We, uh, we also know that uh, you can relate your, uh, your, your grid, we had taken it as AV uh, cos omega naught T, where, where uh, uh, the instantaneous uh, grid voltage is related to the amplitude and is a, a sinusoidal function. So, so you can relate your power rating, your P rated, is AV AI by uh, root 2 root 2. So you know what your uh, uh, your I, AI has to be in terms of your power rating and your terminal voltage rating. And so you know what your current uh, is that is actually flowing into your uh, neutral point. So this neutral point current is actually a 50 hertz current. And uh, we are assuming that the switches S plus and S minus are being modulated in a symmetric manner. So in, during the positive half cycle, what is happening to S plus, it is identical to what is happening in the negative half cycle to S minus. So there is symmetry between the operation of the top and the bottom leg of the uh, switches in this particular power converter. Okay. So whatever current is flowing in splits between the capacitor CDC, CDC uh, as I cap going in one direction into your top bank and I cap going into the bottom direction in the bottom bank. And uh, one thing that you could immediately note about this current, so if there is a current flowing into the bottom bank, this is actually charging this capa bottom capacitor, whereas the same current which is flowing out into your top bank is actually discharging the, the top capacitor. So the current is actually a common mode current. It doesn't affect the differential voltage between your positive and negative DC bus. Uh, even though it affects the individual capacitor voltage, the total voltage between your positive and negative uh, is not affected by this common mode current because one is charging when the other is discharging and the other way around depending on the instant at which the current is flowing. So the next component of the current that uh, can flow through this uh, capacitor uh, bank is, uh, is we'll see that it uh, has a DC and a 100 hertz component. And for this, again, we are assuming your the voltage uh, uh, to be AV cos omega T. So V O N is AV and 
we can we can look at what is the power going out of your park uh, of the AC leg and the power coming in and we will make some assumptions we will assume that uh, the inverter is very efficient which means it is uh, lossless and uh, the filter is purely inductive so there is again no losses in the inductor. So, we will also assume that the voltage at the input VDC is quite stiff uh, typically by design you will try to maintain that voltage to be uh, constant. <coughs> So, assuming <coughs> we have P out. IP is the current flowing through your positive DC bus and so this is uh, P out is AV AI cos square omega T. So, you can write what your IP of T is AV AI by VDC cos square omega t so you can see that uh, by looking at the uh, the power balance between your input and your output you can see that there is a DC quantity that is flowing through your DC bus which uh, you would naturally expect because you are exchanging power from one source to the other. But in addition to that now you see that you have a 100 hertz component which is uh, uh, coming in the DC bus. Okay. and has a value of A V A I by 2 V D C and then there is a second harmonic component and its amplitude is also A V A I by 2 V D C. So, if you then look at uh, where is the uh, this part particular second harmonic this particular current flowing uh, this current is actually flowing through this particular circuit uh, back through this particular loop and this is actually a component which uh, uh, is circulating in the DC bus. So, it shows up as a, a differential voltage across your DC bus. So, uh, this component will uh, uh, so if you actually measure the voltage across the DC bus the 50 hertz would not show up across the DC, D DC uh, bus as a total across the total voltage whereas the 100 hertz component will actually be measured across the DC bus okay. and uh, some part of it because uh, if you are thinking about say an application like a photovoltaic inverter you might have a prime source okay, which might be your your PV panels, it might be your batteries if it is a, a storage system, it might be a fuel cell stack depending on whether what application it is. So, one thing that a 100 hertz component uh, can actually do is it will split between 
uh, your capacitor CDC and your prime source depending on the impedance of these two sources at that particular 100 hertz. So, if you have a, a, a higher impedance for CDC, it means that most of your 100 hertz might flow through the prime source and many times the effects of uh, this uh, 100 hertz ripple in the <coughs> prime source is actually negative in the sense that uh, in a photovoltaic system, the 100 hertz component would just cause heating of the elements, uh, not any real generation of power. Also, the uh, 100 hertz uh, voltage which would mean that your actual operating point is deviating from your MPPT point. So, in multiple ways you are actually losing out on uh, power. If you are taking a battery, uh, your, uh, your effective capacitance of the battery can be quite large which means that uh, a fair amount of 100 hertz can actually flow into it and this will cause uh, losses in the electrolyte, uh, the electrodes, etc. Again, in things like a fuel cell, it, is, it will cost uh, cause heating of the stack, etc. So, these are un undesirable components to, to some extent that people might even think about adding a power converter over here to prevent that uh, uh, 100 hertz ripple from actually flowing into the prime source and uh, affecting the uh, performance of the prime source. <coughs> the other uh, uh, item of interest when we are looking at the 100 hertz component is that uh, uh, if you look at the path for the 100 hertz component, the, uh, the output current I out consists of largely the fundamental, uh, so this is 50 hertz. It might have some switching frequency ripple, but you are assuming that your filtering is being designed in an efficient manner that it is largely uh, 50 hertz and you are not having much of switching ripple. And also your controls are ensuring that uh, you are not having low frequency harmonic distortions in your output voltage. So, if you look at where is the path for the 100 hertz component, it is flowing through the DC bus, it is flowing through the switches. Uh, so, uh, it is an interesting path that uh, even though we, as we know that the both the switches do not uh, 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 say conduct simultaneously, because of the modulation effect of the power converter, the non-linearity non non involved in modulation you end up with a 100 hertz cu uh, current through the switches through your DC bus. And you could actually explicitly look at these waveforms in a time domain simulation uh, to convince yourself that the path for this 100 hertz component is actually through the inverter. The, the third component of uh, the, the, uh, the current through uh, 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 power converter such as what we have just discussed is now the high frequency component. So, we looked at the DC 50 hertz, 100 hertz. So, you also have because of the PWM switching action a uh, high frequency component of the current flowing through the switches and to determine what these uh, high frequency currents are in the switch, uh, we can look at the switching functions that are being generated uh, by the power converter. Okay. So, so, if you look at the power converter, we have essentially we had uh, the switching function of the stop switch being S plus. So, whenever S plus is on, your current in IP gets connected to I out. Okay. So, there is a, uh, you can make use of the switching function to relate IP to I out. We also make, can make use of the switching functions to relate your output voltage to uh, your uh, DC bus voltage which was what we did to uh, look at what the average output voltage is. Okay. We will assume that all the switching frequency uh, effects occur at the switching frequency uh, rather than spread around uh, a range of band around the nom uh, nominal switching frequency. 
we will also assume that the ripple in AC current is small. and we can make use of the switching functions to obtain your voltage relationship. We saw that V O n is S plus V D C by 2 plus S minus minus V D C by 2. So, this is O with respect to uh, the neutral. If you look at voltage O with respect to the negative bus, you would have S plus V D C uh, to be uh, directly giving your V O with respect to your negative D C bus. Similarly, uh, you can write an expression for what is your positive D C bus current is S plus your times I out of T. So, this gives the relationship between your, uh, your actual current uh, that is flowing in your positive D C bus to your AC output current uh, and the AC output current you know what it is based on the specification of the inverter uh, and we saw how the specification of the inverter is linked to the power rating, voltage rating etcetera. Okay. So, so you, you, what is plotted over here is this uh, uh, black waveform over here is I out, what is shown over here in red is your I p of t, this is I out of t and we can actually then calculate what the average value of I p is in uh, the different durations. So, if you look at over uh, one switching period uh, interval say from one peak to the next peak, we will uh, we'll take that your current is not changing by much because you have about 200 switching cycles uh, when you are talking about a, a 20 hertz uh, I mean 50 hertz fundamental and 10, 10 kilohertz uh, switching frequency. Okay. So, So, I out times D uh, because D is the duration uh, D times T S W is the on duration. Okay. So, if you look at your I out your on duration over here is D times T S W. Now, if you look at the I p average over uh, and what we have averaged it is over the duration of T s w, the actual uh, uh, if you look at it over multiple such cycles you might you will see an average which has a 50 hertz buried in it, it has a 100 hertz buried in it, it has d c. So, it is not just a, a, a flat quantity, it is a it is something which is changing slowly on a cycle by cycle basis. Okay. You could also then look at what is the RMS value of this uh, IP current which is flowing on your uh, flowing in your positive DC bus. So, the RMS 
uh, you can calculate what your IP RMS is. And we know that uh, IP uh, square of T can be written as uh, it is on only during the T on duration. So, it is T on divided by T S W into IP square. So, uh, T on by T S W is your duty cycle. So, you can write your IP RMS to be equal to the magnitude of IP times square root of D. So, so, if you look at the RMS component of the switching frequency in IP during this particular TS duration, the RMS switching frequency component because the IP average contained also the low frequency 50 hertz, 100 hertz effect. If we want to then calculate what is the switching frequency effect component, we will get, we can get it as You can take the IP RMS square minus the IP average square and take the square root of that to will get you the IP switching frequency component during that particular duration TSW. So, this is equal to IP uh, I out of T times square root of D minus D square where uh, the D term is because of the RMS and the D square is because of the average effect. Okay? And we know that your D belongs to the interval 0 to 1. So, D minus D square will always have the appropriate sign. Okay. Now, we know that this is on a per switching uh, cycle basis. So, if you want to look at the switching frequency effect over uh, the whole fundamental cycle, then you need to take these individual high frequency harmonics and sum it up appropriately on a sum of square basis over the longer time frame. Okay? we have n times T S W is 1 by F naught, F naught is your fundamental frequency. So, using that we can get a relationship for your output, uh, uh, for your output, if you are for your RMS current as uh, I, I P F S W RMS is 1 by n summation k is equal to 1 to n over the n points uh, i out of k t s. So, it depends depending on what your a c output is at, at the particular instant square So, you do the RMS calculation over the number of cycles. So, if you look at, uh, so if this is duration uh, say k is equal to 1, k is equal to 2, k is equal to 3 and you know what your 
IP values are at these different instants. Uh, you can go through a, a fairly simple calculation just uh, summing over say 200 points for fundamental frequency of 50 hertz and a switching frequency of 10 kilohertz. So, you will be able to calculate what your uh, high frequency uh, current is going to be through your capacitor bank. Now, uh, once you have the value of the current currents calculated at the different components, frequency components, then we have to make a decision about what type of capacitor we, we would actually be using in uh, the DC bus. And the type of capacitor depends on uh, many factors. Uh, one important factor is the type of dielectric that is being used. And uh, depending on the type of dielectric, you can have uh, ceramic capacitors, mica capacitors, paper capacitors. We, these are high frequency uh, type of uh, capacitors. You could have tantalum type capacitors or electrolytics. You can have polypropylene uh, or polyester uh, if it is AC application. And uh, in the DC bus of a, vo uh, a voltage source converter, a common capacitor that, is be, that would be used is an electrolytic capacitor. And we will see that now once you have these effects, how next can we actually go in and see what would be the appropriate electrolytic capacitor that can be used in the DC bus of a power converter. Thank you.